right after OpenAI's presentation, all of Google I.O. has been dedicated to AI as expected. <laughs> and since a big theme today has been letting Google do the work for you, we went ahead and counted so that you don't have to. That might be a record in how many times someone has said AI. And Google have integrated AI almost into every product they have. So what did Google I.O. bring this year? Let's talk about it. So one of the things that became very obvious while watching OpenAI's presentation was that they are focused on optimizing and improving their model. Now, Google, unlike OpenAI, has a huge library of different products and tools, and that is where Google's trend comes from. They're not optimizing just the model. They're not teaching just the model new things. They are connecting the whole ecosystem of a bunch of different products, a bunch of different tools that they have, and the knowledge gap that they've been building over the last 30 years, all of that tied into a powerful AI model. And even if that model is not as powerful as OpenAI's, which is debatable, the ability of that model to connect to all the different tools and have all the knowledge and technology that Google has is huge. It's super powerful. And this year, unlike last year, Google did not disappoint in Google I.O. They presented a lot of amazing tools, a lot of amazing libraries. All in all, the presentation was impressive. We had image generation, text generation, music generation, integration with Gmail, integration with Maps, almost all of those kind of things. So what did they present? Let's start uh, with the models. Google this year showed the new version of Gemini and Gemini 1.5 Advanced is going to have later this year its uh, context window increased to 2 million tokens, which means that basically you can feed it, I don't know, whole libraries and it can read it within a few seconds. Google has started working towards integrating agents and getting them as part of the um, automation process. They even introduced what they call the AI teammates. So far only for development and for the works space users, but still it's pretty impressive. We got the new image model, uh, Imagine 3. It's our most capable image generation model yet. Which is integrated into the image effects uh, tool. Imagine 3 is actually in many ways on par with Midjourney 6. It's really realistic, it's very high quality images, and it finally got much, much better with text. Now, I'm not sure if it's as good as what OpenAI have shown yesterday for image generation with longer text as part of GPT-4.0. If you didn't see that, watch the video here, but they're definitely not waiting to be outcompeted. They've used generated music um, to the music effects um, library with kind of what they call DJ mode. And they even had a nice little pre-conference uh, show where a musician has been generating music live with generative AI. So we have the sort of melodic element of the viola still in there, we can pull that out. Chip tunes? What do you think about chip tunes? Let's see what happens. Google finally showed the new video model called Vio, and it can generate a pretty impressive 1080p video from text. Google's main advantage is their infrastructure. And for that, they've been going deeper and deeper into hardware, basically building a supercomputer, like what they call a hypercomputer to support AI generation. OpenAI just got the most advanced GPU from NVIDIA and that's it. Right? They don't go into hardware necessarily yet, even though there were rumors. Google are already saying they are going to hardware. They um, announced new Trillium chips that will be available uh, end of 2024. And they are going to be making NVIDIA Blackwell, the latest uh, GPU from NVIDIA available on the cloud in 2025. Google are also making the new watermarking or fingerprinting tool to mark uh, AI generated 
synthetic media, be it videos, images, and other um, types of media, open sourced and available for everybody. They call this the Synth ID, and it's a tool to kind of add invisible watermarks to synthetic media. By the way, until they will actually release that, my next video is gonna be about how to recognize and detect AI, AI images. So be sure you're subscribed to not miss that. Google's biggest advantage is that they have both hardware and extremely strong software and algorithms teams. And so they developed uh, Gemini Nano that can run directly on your device and will be available on Pixel phones later this year. And what this allows is to do things like uh, voice recognition, like summarization, like uh, image manipulation right on the device and not even kind of send any data to the cloud, just do everything on device, which means it's very fast, it's pretty accurate and it's very private. Google presented a very interesting demo of the platform basically uh, detecting when there is a spam call or a scam and notifying the user with never sending the audio to any server, but just doing it fully on device. And that was actually very impressive. And Google being Google with basically the company built by developers for developers, they presented a lot of really impressive and really interesting things for developers. Some of those things, and they presented Gemini 1.5 Flash, which allows you to use 1 million tokens, basically in no time, very, very quickly, and with super fast response time. And I feel like the Gemini 1.5 Flash is kind of Google's response to GPT 4.0, from um, yesterday, because the goal here is to minimize latency and not increase capabilities. Google introduced a very interesting project called Project Asta, which is again very similar to GPT-4.0 that we saw yesterday. And they even revived the Google Glass. At least that's what it seems, not officially, but it was in all the demos and it was on used on stage. So that's kind of impressive and interesting. And as you might have known, Google have released the Gemma open source LLM, which competes with uh, Meta's Llama. And you can just turn it by yourself on your own machine and use it to build other specific models on top of it. It's not as powerful as Gemini, but it's a lot more flexible and you can build a lot on top of it. To add to the existing collection of uh, Gemma models, uh, they announced Polygemma, which is a version of Gemma that can support uh, images and video and sound and all of those kind of things inside the model. So you could build your own mini Gemini with open source code, that's it. Now, I'm not sure about the license of that one. Like, can you make a commercial product based on Gemma? No, in Google, probably not, but it's definitely a very powerful and interesting tool for research and for building new tools on top of it. And of course, not to be outdone by OpenAI with the ChatGPT app, Google released a new uh, Gemini app. And Gemini app has a mode called Gemini Live, which is a conversation uh, model and supports gems, as Google calls them, which are kind of very similar uh, to OpenAI's GPTs or the custom GPTs. And I anticipate that Google will release kind of a, a store for gems. I must say that I love the name gems a lot more than custom GPTs. Just makes more sense. The Google product that everybody is the most interested in and most curious on how it will look in this AI era or the era of Gemini is Google Search. And Google have started experimenting with the AI search experience last year. In the past year, we've answered billions of queries as part of her search generative experience. And it's an interesting idea. There's a lot of risk of it killing both Google's ads and the SEO industries. I don't think that Google figured out how to handle ads in that uh, product yet. And it's they're still not there. And Google have added uh, AI overviews that can overview and summarize whatever you're searching for. And you can search multi-stage reasoning or search multi-step logic. So for example, you can say, show me all the pizza places that are within walking distance for me and have vegan options. Google will Google for you. It became super powerful in all kinds of planning. So if you want to build a travel plan or a meal plan, you just ask it, give me a meal plan for like up to X calories 
um, for the next week and it will do that with a one click export to, to Google Sheets or order the ingredients. Super powerful, super interesting, still disruptive to the ecosystem. We'll see how Google handles that. And this Ask Google or Ask Gemini feature set is not limited only to search. Google have added that and integrated that into Google Photos as well. So now it can actually extract ideas and concepts from Google Photos. You can also ask, show me my daughter's uh, first steps and it will find it from your videos and um, show it to you. So kind of the depth of asking photos got crazy smart. Uh, another product that is very interesting to see how it evolves because it's such a flag uh, flagship product for Google is Gmail. I'm super happy to see that they finally integrated summarize this email and uh, suggested replies. And also it can you can communicate and talk to your email. So if you have 10 different invoices in your email in your mailbox, you can say summarize me on those invoices and it will summarize all of them, collect all of them, and with a click of a button, you get a summary of the uh, invoices in your Google Sheets and copy of the invoices themselves in um, Google Drive. And with another click of a button, you can automate that process and it will keep on doing that forever. Super powerful stuff, super exciting. I cannot wait to use it. I personally uh, have been using Superhuman for quite a while and a lot of those features are in there, but Google can do it better. And I've been very disappointed with Superhuman's AI integration, so Gemini looks so much better and in so many ways Gemini is more powerful than ChatGPT, so that's really exciting. One product that has been noticeably absent from the presentation is Android. In fact, Google presented the Pixel 8a a week before Google I.O. Even though in previous years, Google have presented a new hardware, new Android versions at Google I.O. Now, there is a new Android keynote for the latest beta uh, on the second day, but it kind of from being the center stage and the main thing, it went you know, into like the, the third priority, not even the second one. There is a lot of interesting things like um, tap on screen is back. I remember this thing when you could tap on search and search what is in your screen. Well, now there's two versions of it. One is circle for search, which honestly, I don't get why Google are promoting it so much. Like they have a marketing campaign. They showed it on stage like five times. They have like, they promoted with Samsung. Like what is going on? Why does Google like care about circle to search for, for much? No idea. If you have any idea, leave, let me know in the comments. And another interesting thing is a context of world search with Gemini. So let's say you're watching a video on YouTube. You can press search. Gemini pops up and it has a button saying like, ask this video and you can communicate the video. You can ask to summarize it or extract key parts of the video. So bye bye watch time. It was nice meeting you. As far as availability of all of those things, image effects, music effects, video effects, or VO, they're all available only in the US with a waitlist at labs.google. And you can sign up today, but God knows when you'll get actual access. The new search capabilities are gonna be uh, deployed throughout the US shortly. And the new summarize in Gmail is available now. The QA and response in G Gmail is gonna be available in July. The uh, more advanced summarize and kind of automation is gonna be available uh, in September to uh, Google Labs users. So again, US only. Gemini Live is gonna be available this summer, presumably to everybody but we'll see. Gems will open up in the coming months. There's no commitment to a specific time. Gemini Nano should appear on, on Pixel devices later this year and probably in the coming betas. It's already gonna be available if you own a Pixel device. I'm not sure when it will appear on other devices, if at all, because it relies on Google's custom Tensor CPU inside the Pixel. For developers, Polygemma is available right now and Gemma 2 will be available in June uh, with a 27 billion parameters model that is optimized to run on NVIDIA hardware. So pretty quickly. One thing that's really interesting to kind of as to summarize uh, is that Google relies very heavily on the fact that Apple cannot replicate on device AI logic, because especially as we saw now with the partnership that uh, Apple did with OpenAI, their internal uh, AI team, even though they had a few major stars in that team, cannot deliver. And now I'm 
I love Apple, I'm using quite a few of Apple products, but for some reason, Apple always sucked at, hard, at software and were amazing with hardware, and that didn't change. Almost nothing that they built with themselves have ever worked efficiently as software. That's not true of open source platforms that Apple are involved in. So Safari, OS X, uh, Cups, all of those are high quality, but again, not fully in-house developed. One thing I kept thinking while watching Google I.O. this year is, will next year's Google I.O. gonna be fully AI generated by itself? And I'll leave you with this thought. So I'll see you next time I feel like making a video. Bye.